From San Francisco and AT&T Park, the final game of this four-game set and after yesterday's come-from-behind win, a chance for the Dodgers to split this series and go 5-2 and two on this season opening road trip. Welcome inside with Oral and Nomar. I'm Joe Davis. Alana Rizzo joins us in just a moment. Guys, right from day one this season, we started talking about Yasiel Puig and how key he would be for this lineup. Could swing it one way or another, and it's a small sample. It's just one week, but so far, so good. Well, right now in this first week, it's reminiscent of his 2013 season when he broke onto the scene with the Dodgers. He's hitting the ball all over the place. We look Look at just this graphic right here where he's had hits by location so far. You see the hot spots for him right now. But the one thing that's really been impressive so for me early in this season is the way he's been driving the ball the other way. The way he's been driving the ball to center field. He has tremendous balance right now when he's standing in the box. And that's just you see that where he's making contact with the ball. We don't see him out in front. We don't see him diving. He all, he's also working the walks and we see that balance when he's taking the base on balls. So the Dodgers will look for another big game from him and they'll look for another good start from Scott Kazmir who in his first game as a Dodger was really good on Tuesday in San Diego really really good I'll only give up one hit and you know what he continues to progress as a pitcher making comebacks in his career and it's really about fastballs in different lanes that command has been outstanding up and into right he's low and away he can do it but the pitch that has really made him is the 20 mile an hour changeup. This pitch right now is the pitch that he throws when he's ahead. It's not just a changeup to get back into counts. It's a changeup that's a swing and miss pitch. And it's a couple of free agent signings that will go head to head today. Casimir for the Dodgers. Johnny Cueto makes his home debut for the Giants. San Francisco for the series finale between these longtime rivals Dodgers and Giants playing game four and our closed captioning today is brought to you by sideline add a second number to your smartphone Giants took the first two games of the set Dodgers responding with the next innings win yesterday and in this finale here's Dave Roberts starting lineup brought to you by Honda and to begin with Chase Utley back into the starting role in the leadoff spot. 
with Corey Seeger in there as well. Both those guys a day off yesterday from the starting lineup, but both came in and had some big moments in the late innings. Utley scored the run to tie the game in the ninth. Seeger scored the run. They won the game in the tenth, both coming off of the bench yesterday. Gonzalez and Puig have continued to be great in the middle part of the order. And Trace Thompson makes his second consecutive start with Austin Barnes back in there after Ellis caught the last two. And here's Johnny Cueto, who makes his home debut for the Giants in his season debut for San Francisco on Tuesday in Milwaukee, just one run over seven innings. Yeah, Johnny Cueto versus the Dodgers. He's got a 2-5 and five record with a 2.79 ERA. One interesting thing about Johnny Cueto, if you go over the last five seasons, his ERA is 2.71. There's only one pitcher that has a better ERA over those last five seasons, and his name is Clayton Kershaw. He comes at you with a mixture of pitches, a fastball, a curveball, a slider, a cutter, a changeup, sometimes a deceptive motion out there on the hill, very similar to Louis Tian, and sometimes he speeds that motion up, so be ready for everything. He's a complete pitcher out there. This is a big sign for the Giants, one that they've decided that this season is a chance to win this National League West and take it away from the Dodgers. Jeff Samarja and he were their big offseason signs, and so far, Cueto has paid off. Six years, 120 million. Big deal for Samarja as well. They signed an art span too. Dodgers with some more under the radar moves in the offseason. One of them was signing Chase Utley to a one year contract after he joined the team last August from Philadelphia. He battled an ankle injury much of last season. The numbers were not very good. But off to a great start here in 2016 at the top of Dave Roberts order. Johnny Cueto gets us going with a fastball strike at 88 on the speed gun here at AT&T Park. This is the ninth time Cueto has faced the Dodgers in his career. For the first time, he's pitched in a Dodgers-Giants game. And he hits Chase Utley with his second pitch of the day. And on that pitch, Johnny Cueto went with a quick motion, a quick windup. He didn't turn his back to him and try to see if he can sneak it in there on Chase Utley. And the one thing that Chase Utley, what he has done his entire career, is he will, when the ball's coming in, he just stays there. He does not move. He will take it. He will wear it any way he can get on base. He is as tough, as gritty as they come. That brings up Corey Seager. His double began the 10th inning yesterday. Came in to score on Charlie Culberson's game-winning double. The tying run was set up by a hit-by-pitch of Justin Turner. Seems to be kind of a... Team. Yeah, remember the first run of the day, too, was on a hit by pitch. As Seeger drops a base hit into left field. And Van Slyke got hit with the bases loaded early on yesterday to bring home the Dodgers' first run. After kind of blowing up his back, I'm not sure he would have been able to hit yesterday, but right here, Corey Seeger jumped on the first pitch, fouled it off, and right here kind of just fists one out there, gets jammed. He's had a few of those hits. He's kind of got a Justin Turner bat, one that's got a nice steering wheel on it. Speaking of, there is the Dodgers' third baseman. One for four in yesterday's game, has three hits in this series. Well, that's in only two games. He was given the opener on Thursday afternoon off. Strike one. And the Dodgers in yesterday's game had four innings where they had leadoff doubles. And they were unable to score any of those. So here they are. They find themselves not with the leadoff double, but a man on second with nobody out. Once again, need to find a way to try to get him across home plate. They went two for 21 with runners in scoring position yesterday. Left 13 on base total and still won the game in extra innings. Ball on a strike on Turner. Not too many times, guys, you're going to go two for 21 with runners in scoring position and still win. I think I said yesterday the only way you do that is when Clayton Kershaw's on the mound because he's going to keep you in the game. There's a lot of frustration. Charlie Culberson with a huge hit at the end of the game became player of the game yesterday. It's his birthday today, by the way. 27th birthday for Charlie Culberson. Happy birthday to Andre Ethier as well. Turner behind it at 89, one and two. 
can be a frustrating day to have a lot of traffic on the offensive side and then be the starting pitcher where you're sitting there watching your offense struggle to score runs. You feel good about the fact that they set at the table, but Clayton did a great job just continuing to stay focused and continue to put zeros up there and pitched around the two solo home runs. Two on, nobody out, first inning. And Turner corks a line drive, base hit to right. Huntley gets the wave. Here comes the throw from Pence. It's up the line, and it's 1-0 Dodgers. Turner got too wide on the turn and is thrown out, but has an RBI single to start the scoring here in the first. It was a nice turn by just Chase Huntley there, and this piece of hitting right here from Justin Turner stays on top of a high cheese. Being able to get the barrel to the ball in the high zone over there and just going the other way. Also kind of protecting the plate. And then we see, you know, we see Johnny Cueto in the corner there in that replay. They're gonna they're checking him out right now to see if he got hurt, but they're also looking to see if Justin Turner was tagged here on this one or if he got that hand in there. We've seen the turf give way to a few different people throughout this. Mm -hmm where the root system doesn't seem like it's completely gotten in there, where we don't have a lot of blades of grass per square inch right now. So the spikes go in, but there's nothing really there to grab onto if the guys are slightly off balance. Mm -hmm. It was like that, Nomar, even on Thursday when it was dry. Yeah, yeah they, we, there were guys talking about that. They were talking about how slippery it was on the grass even when it was right and also the dirt they also felt like the dirt hadn't really set properly just yet early in the season so seeing Johnny Cueto slipping is no surprise especially how wet it was yesterday as we have a look at that play at first back when Justin Turner is thrown out it is under official review this is a better angle right here seems like he is out no, he might have gotten that left hand in there before because if he didn't tag his right hand, he didn't really, the tag didn't really hit to the middle of his body. And I think that's what Justin Turner was saying that he goes, he didn't tag my first, my front hand. He missed that. So he really had to go all the way to his chest and is questioning him before he got his left hand in there before that glove touched him in the chest. Both reviews and Dodger games on this opening trip have gone their way. You see that? There, he has, still hasn't been touched yet. Okay, so so you're saying Panic doesn't touch his right hand? He doesn't touch his right hand. I don't think he gets his right hand because he pulled it back. So I don't think the, the glove touched a hand. He, he kept trying to tag him and went for the body. Wondering if he got his left hand in there before he actually touched his body. Two challenges that we've seen on this road trip. One of them kept the scoreless inning streak to start the season going at home plate in San Diego. And it looked like a run had scored for the Padres, but replay upheld the call that it was an out. And then here in San Francisco, a reviewed neighborhood play at second determined that Joe Panic's foot had come off of the bag while trying to turn a double play. We've seen two games across the majors this week end on uh, that new slide rule. Here's your verdict on this one. He's safe. Good job. And the one thing is Justin right away pointed to the dugout to have them look at it. So he felt like he was safe. He was very aware. I tell you now, you know, one we were talking about, okay, man on second with nobody out. It's here all very, already different than yesterday, knocking the run in. Now you have a guy at third base with nobody out. First and third, nobody out. There's another one they can possibly knock in. They started one for 19 with runners in scoring position yesterday. One for one so far today, and here's Adrian Gonzalez. He swings at the first pitch and golfs it foul, strike one. How about the middle part of this order with Gonzalez and Puig four and five most days. Puig has also had a game hitting second and a game hitting third. 
above 500 with the on base percentage for the two guys at the core of this lineup. We've talked going into the season about Yasiel Puig, the importance of Yasiel Puig to have a good year. And the reason being because it's going to help Adrian Gonzalez to give him the protection to possibly see better pitches. And then the other thing is the versatility. We've already seen Yasiel Puig hit in other parts of the lineup. Gonzalez goes after an elevated fastball. And lofts it to right field for Pence. It's deep enough to send Seeger to the plate, and the Dodgers lead 2-0 here in the first inning. RBI sacrifice fly from Adrian Gonzalez. I know we were focusing on Justin Turner so much, but also Corey Seeger did a good job going first to third on that base hit by Justin Turner because he had to have his head up and see if they were actually going to send Chase Utley home to score. And he made it to third easily, which also set up for that sack fly. Alana Rizzo down on the field reminding us uh, in our headsets here, that's the first sacrifice fly of the season for the Dodgers. It's the first out of the inning for Johnny Cueto, and here's Yasiel Pui. He has owned, and there are only four all-time meetings, but we go for four, and he struck out three times against Cueto. Seeger and Turner back to back singles after Utley was plunked. Gonzalez with an RBI and the sacrifice fly. Now two balls and a strike on Puig. Talked about at the open about Yasiel Puig, the approach, the balance. He's even taking pitches very well. Just the difference we've seen this year and the way he ended last year. Another good take. Puig earns the walk. So Puig's aboard, first and second for Jock Peterson. Came off of the bench yesterday. And Scott Van Slyke left the game with a lower back tightness. And it was eventually replaced for a pinch hitter. Dave Roberts had to unload that bench and was out of position players for the time that thing ended. Peterson with a rocket to right, a base hit. Runners had to hold to make sure it would fall, and they go station to station. They're loaded with one gone here in the first inning, and a rocky start for Johnny Cueto. Chuck Peterson does a nice job getting on top of this ball. And we watched the progression of him as a hitter. Outstanding swing. They're coming up and in. They know where his general hole is, but they don't get it up high enough, and he makes a high-quality swing. So, so far, Johnny Cueto's debut in this ballpark not going his way. Yeah, in his ninth major league season out of the Dominican Republic for seven and a half years with the Cincinnati Reds, was traded midway through last season to Kansas City. And struggled for the most part in a Royals uniform, but did have that memorable two-hit shutout game two of the World Series. Royals beating the Mets. They're getting their first world championship since 1985. Chris Thompson now with a nice opportunity here. And we talked guys about the issues yesterday with runners in scoring position. Chris in particular left some opportunities out there. Quickly, here's another. Okay. 
this is a nice position to be in as a hitter when you're coming on bases loaded because there's just one out. Johnny Cueto likes to keep the ball down. He's not afraid to pitch to contact, try to get that ground ball, but it allows you to set your sights higher and make sure you can get a ball maybe in that middle part or upper part of the zone to get in the air. Bouncing ball, base hit, pass belt. They were positioning to pull the ball, and he went down the line for a two-run single, and the Dodgers with a four spot here in the first. First to third goes Peterson on a two-run base hit from Trace Thompson. Brandon Belt positioned off the line, and Trace just kind of reaches out and slaps this by him. They were looking for the double play more over there in the second base hole. You see how wide he is. If he was in a traditional position, it's right at him. They'd probably go 3-6-3 three, three, or 3-6-1, three, but there, no, two RBIs. Four runs on four hits, a walk and a hit batsman in this opening inning for Dave Roberts' team. And now Austin Barnes bunts it first base side. This will get the job done, and then some. RBI bunt single for Barnes, and it's five zip LA. I really like this play by the Dodgers. We actually saw this from the Giants in earlier in this series where they were playing a little small ball putting pressure on the defense after you get some base hits you score some runs well you don't stop, keep your foot off the gas you put some more pressure that was kind of a safety squeeze because you saw over that third base jock peterson didn't take off he waited till he got the bunt down and saw where the angle was going and then he got in scored easily but austin barnes making a perfect bunt and even giving himself a nice base hit and then you see Cueto coming off, and he's slipping all around, and he hasn't quite found his footing on that turf. Now Scott Casimir deadens one. Posey throws to third, now to first, and they still get Casimir. Duffy was in front of the bag, so couldn't get the force out there, and it's a sacrifice for Casimir. Two to five to four, <laughs> which is what you see in your scorebook quite often. <laughs> <laughs> but about 210 feet of throws to get one out right yeah. here cut it off A nice play by Buster Posey but Duffy was up in front of the bag and couldn't get back and I wouldn't be surprised if that's a, a factor of the turf still as guys can't really plant and change directions like we talked about not only has it rained the last pretty much 48 48 hours the, the turf was not Solid even on a nice bright sunny day on Thursday when this series began. You add all the precipitation we've had during this series, and it's a factor. Chris Heston getting loose in the Giants bullpen here in the first inning. And Chase Utley up there for the second time already. Utley hits a high fly ball to right, but Hunter Pence is under it, and the inning is over. But the Dodgers strike for five. They bring ten men to the plate and make Johnny Cueto's first inning in this ballpark a forgettable one for him.
plan out of a hole today before they even pick up the bats. Dodgers get five in the top of the first, but this is a potent Giants lineup that just seems to keep on coming. Denard Span will hit lead off. Joe Panic, Buster Posey, two and three in the order. Then it's Pence, Belt, and Duffy in the middle with a silver slugger. Brandon Crawford showing the length of this lineup by hitting seventh. Ochi bats his pitcher eighth. The Angel Pagan hits ninth against Scott Casimir, making his second Dodger outing. Career low ERA last year at 3.10. Right now, he has not have an ERA. He's only given up a hit in his first outing, got a W. And Scott Casimir, fastball changeup mainly but he's got the cutter and the slider three-time all-star and remember this is the first time this year that he's pitched in the National League a couple of first-year players for these teams span the former national takes strike one that aren't span just one for 14 in this series and a single in game one nothing since The one thing about this giant offense, everybody, they grind out at bats. Just because you put five runs on the board doesn't mean that you can just ease up or that they're going to ease up. They're, these guys are going to grind in battle and play to the end, so you have to be ready. Spam with a protective swing. He stays at 0-2. Well, you're right, Omar, you know, in game one, the Dodgers after four and a half were up 4-0. Mm -hmm. They came back and made it 4-3 in the bottom of the fifth and grounded out, and all of a sudden the Dodgers were down 7-4 to four after six. All three games have been comeback wins. In that first game, those Giants... The Giants come back you were talking about they scored 12 runs on 17 hits but the last two games five runs on seven hits all five runs coming off of home runs 3-2 win for the Giants on Friday 3-2 loss for the Giants yesterday against the Dodgers who last year led the lead home runs 187 oh. the Giants typically not up near the top of the league leaderboard because of this ballpark. Difficult to hit it out of here, but tied for second in the majors so far with 11 home runs. Span waits at a breaking ball and we'll do the one two again. When you're pitching against the Giants, you really have to look at their splits, not just their overall stat statistics because of this ballpark. So when you face them here, you might have a different philosophy on how to pitch them compared to when you face them on the road. Seven pitch of this at bat. Casimir to span. Hard hit. Might have been deflected either off of the mound or off of the glove and right to Seeger to get span for the first out. So Span retired by Kazmir, and now Joe Panic to the plate. He came on as a pinch hitter yesterday, maybe one inning too late. Kelby Tomlinson, who made the start at second base for the Giants, misplayed an Adrian Gonzalez grounder in the ninth inning that likely would have been an inning ending and game ending double play. Pence came in, or Panic came in for him after that. The Dodgers had already tied it, sent it into extras and won it. In 10. There's Tomlinson. It's the first extra innings win here for the Dodgers in four years. You know, having extra inning wins or having late game wins coming back. Set, tells the team a lot, especially early in the season, lets you know throughout the rest of the season. It gives you that confidence that when you're in those tight ball games that you can pull them out. And a strikeout for Kazmir. Panic couldn't get that sweeping breaker. Two out. 
Scott Kazmier has an array of pitches, but when he gets ahead, the swing and miss pitches are the changeup and that slider right there. Now Buster Posey, in, even to a greater degree, I think, Nomar, because of how difficult of a loss Friday night was to swallow, and even Thursday when they had a 4 nothing lead. Last night, while it's game six of the year, was really important. I thought it was a big win for the series, for this road trip, because the Dodgers basically could be 3-0 and right now. They had a chance to win all three games. Posey, a jam shot, but it'll sneak through a base hit. And I think when you you know that as a team, so if they had been coming in 0-3, this one it's deflating where you're going, okay, well, let's just try not to be swept. Let's not go down 0-4. So you get that one, so you're like, well, there's a chance that we split here at, at at t Ballpark. But just the simple fact that while well, they came back and beat us the first two, and then it was now we couldn't even get that third one, and we have our ace on the hill and the pitching, for all, the, all the emotion surrounding that. So for them to come back and win was huge yesterday. Casimir to Hunter Pence. Strike one. Oh. Remember, Casimir gave up an infield single in the first inning to Corey Spangenberg in his first start at San Diego. Went on to retire the final 17 batters that he faced. Gives up a two out single to Posey and brings it 0 1 to Pence. Own hit in this series for Pence. A grand slam to put the opener away. One ball, two strikes. A slide step fastball right there. Casimir using a tool that Johnny Cueto uses a lot. Where you Try and vary the timing of the hitter, not only with your pitches and the type of pitch, but with your delivery. There, the full leg kick with the changeup. So you jump at him with the fastball, maybe you get a reaction swing, and then you go full leg kick and see how long you can wait now that I'm going to throw this changeup. Chokes up with two strikes, two outs in the first inning with the Dodgers in front, 5 0. Getting Casimir some breathing room before he even takes the ball. Fence lays off the change up, counts full. Posey will be on the move from Kurtz. What a swing of emotion the Dodgers have had since that ground ball that Adrian Gonzalez hit. And it could have been a double play to really kind of end the game. And we'd end to be down 0-3 here in San Francisco. Well, now we're not only have a win in the back pocket, we got a 5-0 lead. He's walked Pence. With two on with two out now for Brandon Belt. Scott Casimir has looked really good in the first two batters with getting Denard Span with the ground ball and the strikeout on panic. And actually, even Buster Posey, he jammed Buster Posey. That wasn't a really solid hit. He just kind of found the hole to the right side. And it just seemed like he just lost a little bit of his mechanics there against Hunter Pence. Brandon Bell, one for 11 in this series. Tried to check, couldn't lay off, strike one. Agreed the terms of a new contract yesterday, a five-year extension, somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 million. Fly ball to left. Thompson started back. Now comes on and won't get there. And the Giants string together three base runners with two outs, and it's 5 1. 
couple of degrees of difficulty on this play for Trace Thompson. The fact that it's a full swing and it's not hit real hard. And then the spin with a left-handed batter slicing it to left field. So this ball is working away from Trace as it comes down. So that spin makes the ball curve more to the line. You see his route kind of alter there towards his right shoulder as he tries to reach that one. Now Matt Duffy with two on and two out. And then the other thing you factor in on that oil is the fact that it's Brandon Belt. The outfielders are going to play a little bit deeper because he's the one who's a power hitter. It's compared to maybe somebody else who might have been a few steps closer might have been able to get to that ball. He's kind of like a Jock Peterson of last year that even in the two strike counts Brandon Belt will make the full swing. He's got power with two strikes. Swing and miss kind of guy even with two strikes but if he makes contact it's going a long way. I really like Matt Duffy. I know he wears a giant uniform and he's got orange on and the wrong people are cheering for him. But as a player, this is a guy that I think is going to be really good for a long time. Another one of those homegrown pieces for the Giants. Tiger infield. Belt at first, Panic at second, Crawford at short, and Duffy at third. You can even include Posey behind the plate. All homegrown pieces of this Giants organization. He is from Long Beach, so, so he's got that going. So he's yeah. from LA, so right. So we're allowed to like him a little, a little bit. bit, right? Twenty-seven pitch first inning for Scott Casimir and Duffy chops one foul. The way this first inning has gone with the Dodgers getting five runs and the Giants coming back with one here and the ball being put in play right down the line. It feels like it's going to be a battle all day. Nothing is coming easy for the defense. Hence in second, belt it first. Kazmir's one two to Duffy is lined to right a base hit past the diving chase Utley pleads there to the plate up the line the tag not there and it's 5 2. Pence able to slide around the tag attempt from Barnes that's four consecutive two out base runners after Kazmir retired the first two of the inning. There's a great effort by Yasiel Puig out there in right field. He came charging. He was in control. It looked like he was going to have a chance at home plate, and he did have a chance. Just the ball was just up the line just a little bit. And also that new rule where you also have to give the runner a lane to slide into. Austin Barnes is a little bit out in front of home plate to give him that lane and is unable to reach with the tag. And it was a good call because he did not get Hunter Pence. Roberto Kelly down there Hunter Pence ran through a stop sign Roberto wanted to stop him and kept trying to stop him all the way down to just outside the batter's box there but you can see Pence made it in. So after Casimir got spanned to ground out struck out panic Posey single softly hit. Pence walked. Belt blooped the base hit. Duffy really with the first good contact. It's 5 2, and Brandon Crawford to the plate. So after the Dodgers get five for Casimir at the top of the inning, the Giants find a way to bring the tying run to the plate here in the bottom of the first. Crawford had the walk off home run on Friday night in the 10th inning. Two for nine in this series overall.
Crawford down on strikes. Second strikeout of the inning for Kazmir, but the Giants rally with two outs to play it too. All kinds of offense in the first inning of this series finale. As we go to the second, we check in with Alana Rizzo. Just a quick update for you on Scott Van Slyke, who was removed from the game yesterday with lower back tightness. Dave Roberts said he's doing better. He slept on it, feels better today. Doesn't want to have to go to him, however, trying to stay away from him for a couple more days and then with the off day tomorrow. As far as Chris Hatcher is concerned, who tweaked his left knee on the mound, that muddy mound yesterday, he said that he's fine. Dave Roberts also trying to stay away from Hatcher, considering he pitched back-to-back -back days, but if he needed to face one or two batters, he could do so, guys. All right, Alana. Corey Seager leading off this inning against Johnny Cueto and down to the count of two. And Dave Roberts said today, not a guy we can afford to lose. Scott Van Slyke, a guy that does so much for this team. A quick pitch Seager here and miss off one and two. And already seen Carl Crawford go down on the disabled list, which was after Andre Ethier and his injury during spring training. Seeger strikes out swinging first punch out of the game for Johnny Cueto. Johnny Cueto with a change up right there. Sometimes with your fastball as a pitcher, you're mostly trying to keep it down. But watch the target from Buster Posey on all these pitches. They're trying to keep it up. Dodgers doing a good job getting on top of the high fastballs. A few times Cueto doesn't get it up high enough, but other times really good swings at getting the barrel on top of those high fastballs. We see more aggressive approach from this Dodger lineup. Seven of the first ten hitters swung at the first pitch. As they brought ten to the plate in that first inning. Justin Turner cashed in the first round with an RBI single. This one's popped up again. A quick pitch from Cueto. Denard Span. Cueto's quick pitch. Pretty much all of his pitches so far in this inning. Did that for the first few pitches on uh, Corey Seager, and then he's done that for the first two ones on Justin Turner. Let's see if he decides to do that as well to Adrian Gonzalez. Abbreviated leg kicks and abbreviated step backs. This one to Adrian Gonzalez. Strike one. The, the differing tempo is difficult on the hitters and then difficult on television directors, too, right? You try to get your rhythm going. Just when you think you got a guy figured out, he changes up that tempo on you. Changed it again on Gonzalez. That one, he didn't even go with a leg. He got a turnaround like he almost stuttered on that. There was like a slight pause, too, as he was going. So it's really utilizing that. Maybe for him, that also helps him get back in the plane where he wants to pitch for his mechanics. 
And he has four or five different tempos or deliveries. That's not communicated through signs. So the catcher Buster Posey doesn't know what delivery is coming. Beto just kind of decides on his own. As long as he knows what pitch is coming and it's the right one that he puts down, the catcher will be all right. Gonzalez taps it past the mound. A tough play. Crawford flipped it over there, but late. Brandon Crawford came about 70 feet to field that ball. It's ruled an infield single for Gonzalez. Brandon Crawford has an awful lot of range out there in the infield. I mean, he wasn't even on the second base side. He was on the shortstop side, and he came all the way across, and that was really his only play and chance he had. And that's an awfully long flip with the glove to try to get that over to the first base, but also kind of in a more line drive rather than up lob. And it was really difficult, but just didn't have enough and made it very, very close. Gold Glover last year for the first time. Puedo de Yasiel Puig walked his first time. Came in to score one of the five first inning runs for the Dodgers. And is now reached in 16 of his 28 plate appearances. We've heard so much about a new disciplined lifestyle that Yasiel has now, and it's like the discipline outside the game, showing up on time, doing things appropriately as he moves through the day. It's really come into the batter's box, showing a lot more discipline there. Spirals out of the way of a fastball that got away from Cueto, two and two. One of the things that he's doing around the ballpark now is he wants to know when the first bus is going to arrive and he tries to beat the first bus every day. Got him over the inside corner for strike three. Cueto with a much better second inning after the Dodgers got five of the first. They had to work during that first inning, retired the first two, but then the Giants brought four in a row to the plate and played it two. Bottom of the second now, and he faces Johnny Cueto. Pitcher hitting eighth for Bruce Bochy once again. 
And taking a ball. Casimir threw 75 pitches in his six shutout innings on a, uh, his first start of the year. He threw 31 during the first inning here today. Yeah, it can be taxing, and it's kind of a little anxious time for a pitcher. You come back over and you look at the pitch counter, you look at the chart, you see 31, you're like, boy, I just want to go five at least. You don't want to put that strain on the bullpen, but the Dodgers can go to the bullpen early today to protect Scott's pitch count just because of the off day tomorrow. And because they got eight innings from their starter yesterday. One inning from Chris Hatcher. It's a nice bounce back for him. Struck out the side yesterday after giving up the game tying home run on Friday night. And then the save from Kenley Jansen. That's so important for guys in the bullpen to have short memories. You just all of a sudden can't say, I need a mental day off or two, you know, when you've thrown very few pitches but not gotten the job done. You've got to be back in there. Cueto strikes out. Dodger fans mark the calendar for April 13th. The Dodgers and D backs at 7 10. And the first 40,000 fans in attendance get an adult hooded sweatshirt from Bank of America. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. Put that hooded sweatshirt to good use anytime the Dodgers come up here. Come support them at ATT Park. I recommend sitting around other people dressed in blue. Yeah. And bringing a sweatshirt because it is. Uh, we had full sections. Here. We had full sections yesterday great. of Dodger gear on. It was nice to leave yesterday after the game on the team bus and not have to go through the wave of the Dodger chance since the guys in blue won. Yep, you know you're going to hear it. You know <laughs> when the Giants win. It's part of the atmosphere. And you're leaving in that bus that you're going to hear it. The yeah, bus pulls out of the side of the stadium, and there are swarms of people waiting. Just waiting to remind us that we lost. <laughs> now, I hear that last year when the Dodgers clinched the division here, after a lengthy celebration, when the bus pulled out, there was nobody there. It was almost like they had sent everyone home. And what is there to what is there to give the Dodgers a hard time about on that night? And there's a couple of great feelings when you're, as, as a player. One, when you do something really well and at home, and the crowd erupts and that cheer you get. And it's also when you do something really well in a packed house and it's silent. <laughs> That's true. Both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Pagan pulls it on the ground behind third. Long throw. Turner, and it's dug out by Gonzalez. You almost expect him to make that play, and that says something about him because that is not an easy one. He makes this look way too easy because this is a short hop. You don't know how the ball is going to come across from all the way from over there at third. We talked about also the grass, the way it's been giving. You don't know how if it's going to skip or not, if it's going to come up, and he stays with it so easily as we looked at the Morongo slow-mo cam. I think Justin Turner actually threw the, the low throw on purpose, and Adrian had to play the wet grass. Like having a, a catcher, you know, it can block your stuff in the dirt. Nomar is an infielder on that side of the diamond. It's got to be nice knowing you get a first baseman like that. Without question. I always say when you look at infielders, when you look at infields or defenses throughout the league, the top defenses on teams, most of them, and I say probably 90 percent of them would say you have one of the gold glove first basemen over there because they make everybody better. They make your entire infield just better because when you know that if I make a mistake or I throw a ball in the dirt and he's saving errors for you, they actually have a tendency to make less errors where you feel like he's not quite as good over there. You have to be perfect. One and two on Denard Span. Grounded out to short after a seven pitch at bat in the first inning. 
Cueto settled down in the second for the Giants. Casimir trying to do the same for the Dodgers. They're bringing a one two to span. Breaking ball caught the corner. Fourth strikeout in the first two innings for Casimir. And he responds to that two run first with a one two three second. It's a little easier for the Dodgers to leave AT&T Park at night when you get on the team bus because when you're sitting on the bus, this is the wall you stand, stare at. Everything from all the giant gold gloves, MVPs, and then the world championships. They kind of rub in your face also. So it's nice after a W when the fans are a little calmer, but you got to read the history of the New York and San Francisco Giants. Doc Peterson begins his third inning with a swing and a miss. Franchise that started back in 1883 as the New York Gotham's. Came the Giants two years later. And they honor all the world champions, world championships, and all stars and Hall of Famers, and all the awards won while the team was in New York as well, up on that wall. There's that Louis Tiot turn and a fastball strike. When I was the pitching coach for the Texas Rangers, the hitting coach was Rudy Jaramillo. And he worked with all the greats over there, you know, Alex Rodriguez and throughout that whole Texas offense. And he always talked about the trigger of timing the pitcher's delivery. You know, when do you separate? When do you kind of work on your rhythm as a hitter? Mm -hmm. With Cueto, it would be hard. Was, sometimes he would do, okay, when he lifts his leg, I want you to start your rhythm. When he when his leg starts to come down, I want you to start your rhythm. When he does his turn. Everybody has a, a different trigger. Um, and, you know, for me, it really wasn't about the leg kick for the pitcher. I was really trying to focus on just the arm as my trigger as it was coming and as he was going back and then going. So in case they would try to do this. I mean, does this, there is some deception to this, don't get me wrong. But you're right, everybody tries to find that trigger for themselves to get them in the right hitting position and balance before they're about to swing. Peterson behind a fastball. Third punch out of the game for Cueto, one away in the, th in the third. You know, one of the things that that timing of a pitcher's delivery starts in the on deck circle. I mean, Austin Barnes is going to be staring down Johnny Cueto. He's going to be trying to find his own rhythm with his delivery. But when Cueto's changing to four and five and six kinds of deliveries, it gets hard. Would you spread out against a guy like this, Nomar? Well, I was spread out naturally because I didn't have to stride. So that's why I say it didn't affect me as much because I wasn't striding. But there is an effect because my, my weight shift is still occurring. Chris Thompson lifts one 
back of first. Panic coming over and making a smooth basket catch. The belt bailing out of the way. Two gone. Well, this is a long run for the second baseman, but it, it's actually an easier play for the second baseman than the first baseman because you can see how Brandon Bell, how he's moving backwards as compared to an angle that Panic is running to. He just did a good job getting there and making a nice catch. Two up and two down. Now Austin Barnes. An RBI single his first time on a bunt. He's laid in a fastball. Strike one. Johnny Cueto grew up admiring Pedro Martinez. Another guy with a smaller stature, but good stuff. Who you spent plenty of time around. Good one to admire. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, Pedro, you know, he, he was the best. He was the best I saw in person. And we had know about the dot with Clayton Kershaw. I get asked, I said, listen, Clayton Kershaw is creeping right there with Pedro Martinez. He is definitely get there neck and neck. But right now, just I mean, Clayton Kershaw's young career is almost there. But as a whole, for me, it's Pedro. The stretch that Pedro put together in the late 90s, a three or four year stretch, one of the great three or four year stretches for any pitcher ever. Of course, you call to mind the mid 60s with Sandy Koufax, what Randy Johnson did in the early 2000s, and what Clayton Kershaw is doing right now. And I say this all the time when people talk to me about that, and I play behind them during that time, is that you found yourself as a player, you're supposed to be out there, you know making the plays behind him and being the game and he was doing such amazing things on the field that you found yourself being a fan at times like still <laughs> just get caught up Barnes swings over a shot breaker that bounces in there and that's a one two three third inning for Johnny Cueto five two Dodgers onto the bottom of the third T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. Go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB to sign up now and catch every moment of America's, or on America's fastest-growing LTE network. Back at AT&T Park, 2, 3, and 4 for the Giants coming up. Joe Panic, Buster Posey, Hunter Pence against Scott Kazmir. We tired the first two men in the first inning, then four consecutive men reach for the Giants, plating San Francisco's two runs. He's retired four straight since then.
Chase Utley on the edge of the outfield grass. One out. Keep the ball down, throw strikes, get the leading lady out, maintain the 5 to 2 lead. That's what he's thinking when he left the bench, and that's what he accomplished so far getting the first hitter out. Back here in the Bay Area, where he really jumped back into the upper echelon of the game starters with the Oakland A's a couple of years ago. He pours in a strike to Buster Posey. Remember, this is a guy in Scott Kasmer who pitched in one major league game between 2011 and 2012 combined. Posey with a moonshot down the left field line. If it stays fair, no doubt. It's a fair ball and a home run. Keep the ball down, throw strikes. That's what he did with the first hitter and the first pitch to Posey. It was down by the knees, a good fastball, but check out the changeup. It's just laying up there in Posey's eyes. And Scott Kazmir almost knew it as soon as he released it. The reaction after Posey hits it as he looks to the sky and wishes he could have that one back. Beautiful swing by Buster Posey. And so the Giants have now set a new franchise record by homering in each of their first seven games. They only hit a homer in their first six games twice, 1948 and 2000. Satisfaction on the giant bench from Posey and anger on the mound with Kazmir. Well, the Giants are making this field look small so far this series with the home runs that they've been hitting. Ties them with the Rockies for the most in baseball. Pence lines a base hit to left. When your fastball is good, but they're staying on your changeup, they're probably going to need to throw a few more breaking balls down and in to some of these righties. You can see how Hunter Pence is able to reach out there, stay back long enough to hit the changeup and extend his arms. That would tell me, and Austin Barnes should know also, that the inner half of the plate needs to be used on some of these righties. Brandon Belt, RBI single his first time up. It's the part of the order that got it done against Kazmir in the first inning, doing it again. Posey and Pence started that first inning rally with a single and a walk. And here in the third, Homer single. You obviously like to get that double play ball, but you see Corey Sear kind of going over there right now and talking. But with this shift and the way they're playing, not a very easy to be able to turn a double play. Not saying they can't, but it's just certain balls that you might think, oh, that's an easy double play, may not be that easy. I'll tell you what, Nomar, with the new rules about sliding at the second, going directly at the bag and not really going after the players. With Corey Seager on a ground ball to Justin Turner, who's your third baseman playing second. Corey Seager ends up being the one that's going to have to run a long way to make that turn. The new rule helps you because you're going to you don't have to be as under control and as athletic around the bat. And you, there's no there's less fear. Brandon Belt hammers one in the air to deep right center field. And just like that, this game is tied. Speed pitch right here. Little cutter. It doesn't cut a whole lot. It ends up looking like a fat, kind of elevated fastball. A home run to Buster Posey. 
The head went up. The home run here to Brandon Belt. Scott Casimir's head goes down. Game tied. Ball on to Matt Duffy. They just keep coming at you. We talked about that in the very first inning. Yeah, you can put up five runs in the very first inning, but it doesn't feel like you're, you have control of this game. Now Casimir plunks Duffy. I didn't think that was on purpose, but it is. I'm going to throw the ball in and make sure I get it in there because they've had these right handed hitters stretching out and hitting the change up, not really establishing that you can, are going to pitch in. And when the hitters start to turn the outside corner into the middle of the plate, you have to reestablish your boundaries on where you're going to go. And so he didn't hit him on purpose, but he definitely was going to say, I do need to pitch in. Eight of the last ten San Francisco runs have come off of homers. Brandon Crawford has one of those home runs. So Scott Casimir gave up just one hit over six shutout innings in his Dodger debut Tuesday in San Diego. He's now allowed five runs on six hits over two and a third. Crawford hits one in the air to center. Jack Peterson has it two away. It's a big swing right there. He just got under it. You talked about Yasiel Puig in the open about being balanced and looks like he's seeing the ball well. But right now it seems like these giant hitters are be are balanced in the box, comfortable and seeing the ball well off Scott Casimir. You talked about what a come from behind win last night yesterday for the Dodgers does for your psyche moving forward. Well the Giants and all four wins this season have trailed. All four wins have been comeback wins. It has been an entertaining series. Did you expect anything else. These two get together. Fredo bunts it towards Gonzalez. He's hoping that it rolls foul and it does. Adrian Gonzalez is so smart and knew right there what he had to do. Read the ball, the spin of it. Fredo made a great bunt. He also knew that a lot of times some pitchers, I mean some first basemen will say, okay, as he's running, if I feel that I can tag him and get him but he recognized no he didn't have a chance by the way where he was relative to the speed of the ball and the way Cueto was getting out of the box so he said his only play was to let it go foul. Blips on the center that Peterson will pull in to retire the side. But the Giants have come back from down five nothing with two in the first and three here in the third. We get a new ball game.
first. Nothing in the second and the third. We go to the fourth inning. We've been breaking down the different deliveries, Nomar, and you know, talking about how difficult it's going to be to try and time this up. Well, despite the numerous pitches that Johnny Cueto has, he also changes those pitches up with the delivery. So we look on the left. That's the quick pitch over there on the left side. And then you saw the twist with the body on the right. And he'll do that with fastballs changed up to another pitches. Kind of remind you of this guy, Louis Dion. Cueto's hero might have been Pedro Martinez, but Pedro didn't pitch like that, but Johnny Cueto loves the rotation or the lack thereof. El Diante. Cueto started experimenting with the turn like that in his delivery a few years back. As Casimir fouls off the first one in 2011, which was his fourth major league season. After he was right around league average over his first few years. Needed something to change things up, some kind of wrinkle. So he had that turn in his delivery and had a breakout season in 2011. That began the stretch that he's currently in that you referenced at the start of the game, Nomar, which is where he is number two in all of baseball in earned run average, only behind Clayton Kershaw. 2011 when he added the turn to now. You can guarantee your tickets to opening day, which is now just two days away at Dodger Stadium by getting the Dodgers mini plan. You can choose from great promotional games while you do it. Go to Dodgers.com slash mini plans. He is into that dish. Ball one, Chase Utley. And the Dodgers need to find some way to put some pressure back on Johnny Cueto. They did that in the first inning, but they've allowed him to really settle in into this ball game. That Cueto made the adjustment. He was using kind of a conventional delivery for him in the first inning. Got hit around, was mostly in the stretch. But ever since then, he has, when he started the innings from the windup, he is bringing all the different moves. Bet you he's a pretty good dancer. He's got one delivery that he hasn't shown that kind of does look like a dance move. He calls it the rocking chair. Oh, he does he that turn. back and forth and then the shoulders. He gives a little shimmy to it. Yeah. It takes a lot of athleticism and timing between your lower half and your upper half and your arm swing because you know all pitchers are trying to coordinate their lower part of their body to help drive the train so the arm can just go along for the ride. But for him to use so many different deliveries and then to know when to break his hands so that his arm swing then matches with the leverage from the lower half. It takes a tremendous amount of talent and rhythm. Utley cranks one deep to right field. Pence turning and watching it hit off the wall. He juggled it, so Utley's got himself a double. And Chase Utley's great road trip to begin this season continues. Well, I just said the offense needs to put some pressure on Johnny Cueto here, and Utley is putting on that pressure now with a nice double despite all the different de deliveries of Johnny Cueto. Staying on that ball down and in, and he crushes it off the wall. So now, talked about the Dodgers struggles yesterday with runners in scoring position going two for 21 so far in this game they are four for five with an opportunity now to knock another run in and Corey Seager who is one for two Singleton scored in that first inning swings away strike one guys the last time the Dodgers scored five runs in the first inning in this ballpark was in 2001 and it happened to be the game that Barry Bonds hit number 71 and 72 to break Mark McGuire's record. So the Dodgers wind up winning that game 11 10. The pitcher's duel. <laughs> Four hours, 27 minutes, nine inning game. 427 is the longest nine inning game in NL history. That's a long one. <laughs> Jeez, we had, uh, no. we had 10 innings yesterday, and wasn't it under? Three hours, maybe two nights ago is 10 innings in under three hours. Oh, 
Seeger lines one into center. Spam plays it in a bounce. Utley coming to the plate on an RBI. Base hit from Corey Seeger. Dodgers back in front. What was that uh, stat you talked about, Chase Utley, from base running? I mean, I can't remember it, but you were talking about how he ranks taking extra bases. It's not based on stolen bases and how well he runs them. Well, this is a great example because this ball is you have to read this and know if it's going to be caught or not because there is a question of whether it's going to be caught but when he turned around he just had one glance and knew that he could take off and got a great jump and scored easily on this ball you see that little glance he's his momentum's going to assume but even if he thought okay it's going to be caught he knew he still had a position to get back to the bag but he scores easily the stat is base running above replacement as Turner hits a deep drive to left field Back on it goes Pagan, catches it at the edge of the track. Route number two, baseline above replacements from fan graphs and without diving into what goes into it because I think that's when it gets a little tough to digest. It's basically a way to measure overall the way the guy runs bases. And since 1950, he ranks 13th in that category among all players. And we've seen it. This was a team that was not running the bases very well for much of last season. And then he showed up in August and had an impact on the entire roster. You know, a lot of times we, we talk about that player that brings this energy to the team, that type of impact, so Chase Utley. It's not often, it, we're usually not measuring that or feeling that when they're swinging the bat or when they're making play on defense. It's usually how they run the bases. Adrian Gonzalez. It's one in the air to center. It's Denard Span to put it away and retire the side. But the Dodgers jump back in front. A double from Utley. A single from Seeger. And it's 6-5 as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one of your local Dodge dealer today. Dodgers by run to the bottom of the fourth inning here in the series finale between these two franchises. Chase Utley with a double scored in a Corey Seager single to put LA back in front. Angel Pagan takes ball one from Kazmir. Nine, one and two for the Giants in this inning. And this is one of the reasons Bruce Bochy likes hitting his pitcher eight. Then you get to put Pagan and Span back to back and they begin the inning with that. Really with two leadoff type hitters. And that puts Buster Posey in the four hole this inning. I 
think this is a big inning right now for Scott Casimir and for the Dodgers. You, know, you hear that we, you hear that term that shut down inning you know, after you score some runs. And a lot of times it's that shut down inning because it's that momentum inning. It's to keep the momentum on your side, especially after the Giants tied this game up. Angel Pagan drives the ball to deep left center, and there goes the momentum. Man, who are these guys? Leading the majors in home runs. Pagan's first of the season, tied at six. Talk about the batting order, having them hit ninth. They have two leadoff hitter types, but their leadoff hitter in the nine hole's got some pop. This is no mo mo right here. Gets the head out, and just drops the barrel on that. This is not the easiest place to hit home runs, but the wind here has been blowing right to left, six to ten mile an hour most of this series, and those Giants are used to jumping up and down when the ball clears the fence. And they came in with nine different players homering so far in these six games in their first six games. Well, they added another one there with Angel Pagan. Lewis Coleman loosening in the bullpen. So tied for the major league lead in home runs now with 14. The Colorado Rockies a bit two today. The difference. Obvious, and that is the ballparks that the teams are playing in. The Giants, though, have started the season in Milwaukee. Got off to a good start there, but they've had no problem leaving this yard, which normally contains the ball pretty well. Sure, we've had a home run to right field. We've had one Jock Peterson kind of right center, but most of the home runs have been the ones that have kind of been helped a little bit by the right to left wind that we've had here the last four days and nights. Span hits it to Utley. First out of the inning. This is really the first time that we've seen a Dodgers starting pitcher struggle. So far this year, a 183 under an average for the starting rotation, which is best in baseball. It was Ross Stripling, number five man in the rotation. He, of course, had seven and a third no hit innings in his major league debut Friday night. To Joe Panic. Rodgers didn't allow a run in that series down in San Diego. Gave up the 12 runs on the opener of this series, but then good again the last two games. Giants getting the bats going again this afternoon. Kenta Maeda do up next in the rotation. He'll get the home opener on Tuesday. That's going to be a lot of fun for the Dodger fans to see him pitch. Especially in such a dramatic regular season game as the home opener. He's going to have an awful lot of fun and he's going to be greeted with a lot of fanfare. Easy guy to get behind, huh? Easy guy oh. to cheer for. And Adopt is, uh, is one of your favorites. Yeah, we'll get to see as the cameras kind of rode the stands there in Dodger Stadium. How many people have whose jersey on? Usually Kershaw wins, but that's to be expected. But I think the Maeda jerseys are going to get pretty popular. Dave Roberts said yesterday that he was. Uh, he was tossing around the idea of having Maeda hit if he needed another player off of the bench because he was out of position players as that game went into extras. Panic shoots one to short. Backhand Seeger plants his foot and throws him out. 
What do you think of that play, old shortstop? I think that was a fine play by Corey Seager. One, it was sharply hit, but once he gets to it, it's really the calmness and the control of his body to put a good throw. Once he has it, see how he gets his feet set and also his body in a position to make a strong throw and an accurate throw over to first base. A lot of his height is from his legs and, and to get for him to be able to bend over and reach over then get that balance like you said that, that shows a tremendous athleticism. There are some that say he's too big to stick at shortstop and that he profiles better at third. And they say that because of the height, because of those legs. But when I when I say this time, and when I see his manner, his movements are of a shortstop. They're very fluid, and they're very athletic. As compared to you know third basemen, you can see some big third basemen, and what they have to have is two things: is quick feet and quick hands because of how ball how sharp the ball. But they don't necessarily need the range. Well, he has quick feet, quick hands, and he has a quick first step too to get to balls. You know who else is 6'4 at shortstop is Carlos Correa, the American League Rookie of the Year last year. You don't hear a ton about him having to move anywhere. I think it's a lot of it when they see guys and just the way they move. And some people look at their age too and think they might still grow into their bodies and as they get larger and gain a few pounds, you know, are they still going to have the mobility? Casimir trying to get Posey for the first time today. No two. Slaps it to second. Utley's been Ooh. busy. That was a tricky bounce that he fielded cleanly. And the Giants down in order after the leadoff homer from Pagan ties the game at six. on both sides of this rivalry and you know it's one of those things that you know it, it's real the rivalry is real the, the the players love playing it against each other and the fans obviously enjoy it and these are two uh, amazing franchises um, and I think you know both teams need one another they came over here to the West Coast together and I think it's just it's great for baseball. And these guys have played one another 2,432 times. San Francisco with the overall advantage. Los Angeles the advantage since both teams moved from New York to California. Dave Roberts, of course, a part of this rivalry both as a player and now as the skipper, guys. Yeah, and he played four seasons for the Giants manager, Bruce Bochy. A couple years in San Diego, then the two years spent here in San Francisco. Yasiel Puig leads off this inning against Johnny Cueto and ropes one just foul.
gets those arms out. We talked about the extension that Yasiel Puig, when he gets those arms extended, he really drives the ball. Well, he got him extended and just couldn't keep it fair. We like that extension out front. We just don't like the extension when he starts his swing. It makes it long and makes that barrel dip. But to have that much swing left when he was slightly fooled is a residue of good habits that he's building. Walked and scored in the first, struck out in the third. That strikeout in the third inning was his first since opening day when he struck out twice. Solved Johnny Cueto. Five at bats against him in his career. Four strikeouts in those five ABs. Previous four at bats coming when Cueto was a member of the Reds. Quig leading off this fifth inning. Battling against Cueto, still one and two. mentioned his commitment away from the playing field the way that he's reinvented himself during the offseason coming into the regular season where it is a very regimented workout plan that has continued into the day to day of the regular season too. When you have a plan you can just kind of flying from the seat of your pants with outstanding ability that you're blessed with but then you reach a level in baseball or even in any industry where it's it's more than just ability it's all the details that you have to cover and it seems like he has turned the page and and found that discipline now he swings over while we've not seen him chase too many times but goes after that for strike three at the Dodger Stadium Saturday, April 16th, game two of the next series between these teams. And the first 40,000 fans in attendance get a Dodger branded knit cap. Compliments of coffee bean and tea leaf. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. This, by the way, is the 54 year anniversary of the opening of Dodger Stadium against the Cincinnati Reds. Dodgers lost that very first game, won the next day behind Sandy Koufax. Jack Peterson takes ball one. One for two today, singled in the first and scored. Pulled him down there in the bullpen, the Joe. Excuse me right there, but I, I think they might bring him in no matter what here. Kazmir's got 81 pitches, and the next few hitters for the Giants coming up have... Uh, Walking base hit from Hunter Pence and his two times up and Brandon Bell to base hit in a home run. That Casimir's day might be done. That's a part of the order. He's just not been able to solve three through six. But the Giants have reached an eight of their nine plate appearances against Casimir today. He said it four, five, six. Two up in the bottom of this inning. They're thinking that. If they're thinking Lewis Coleman's coming in, and this may be the last one. I'm sure they're it's probably hoping that he can get to the pitcher spot here in this inning, if they can get a rally. So if they have to pinch hit or make the decisions rather than if they're thinking about Lewis Coleman just for more than one inning. Another disappearing off speed gets Peterson to away. It's really hard to think about if you want to bring Coleman in and double switch because 
You're talking about Trace Thompson here or Austin Barnes. One's an outfielder where we're thin in the outfield and one's a catcher where, of course, you're thin behind the plate. You don't want to bring your second catcher into a game with the risk of injury. So if you want to go with Coleman right away and have him end up hitting second next inning, if the score is still tied and he puts a zero up there, it's, it's okay. You know, it's your long reliever and you're in a tie game. But it doesn't doesn't help the offense. Hmm. How often are the are relievers such as Coleman taking batting practice or possibly you know just working on their bunting? It's a little rarer than the starters, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Chris Thompson broke his bat, deflected off of Cueto, and there will be no play for Crawford. So Thompson aboard to keep this inning alive. It's ruled a base hit, his second of the day. We still got a shot to get to Scott Casimir's place here. Now it's up to Austin Barnes to try and turn the lineup over as Trace Thompson hits it off the handle and off of Johnny Cueto and gets a base knock. And Kike Hernandez goes into the on deck circle. Would be ideal if Barnes could reach and get to the pitcher's spot here instead of potentially wasting a player. Barnes one for two. Hey. Well, when you look on the bench, you know, when you think of those outfielders, you're like, okay, if you really wanted to do double switch, if that's what you were thinking, then you have got possibly maybe Trace Thompson, because Kike can play the outfield as well. We saw Charlie Culberson that can we saw play left field. So there are some options. One of the nice things about this roster, not just the depth, but the versatility. So many guys that can play different spots. We saw that from Charlie Culberson yesterday moving into left field for the first time in three years and making a diving catch. Said that he told the coaching staff at the beginning of spring training that that was something he was comfortable doing. And I mentioned it to Dave Roberts yesterday after Scott Van Slyke went out of the game. Dave Roberts come up on it and that is much appreciated compared to a manager saying hey go out there and play left when the player volunteers to go out there and you know the reason I brought up those two guys when I look at when you look at the bench right now it's because Scott Vance like obviously can play out there but they you know dealing coming out with that back issue Dave Roberts mentioned me you know he is available to pinch hit he's available to be used but would really try to see if they can give him that day to really settle it down. Thompson at first with two away and a 6 6 game in the fifth. And a 2 1 from Cueto to Barnes to come after the third first. Barnes it's a fly ball on the right field line peeling foul. Austin Barnes yesterday remember had home run distance down the right field line and we were all up here kind of going whoa some pop in that body. He's not just gap to gap line drive type guy this guy he's got the potential to hit 15 home runs in the big leagues if he played every day. Added 10 pounds of muscle during the offseason. He was acquired in that D. Gordon deal. Came over with Kike Hernandez and Chris Hatcher and Andrew Heaney, who was flipped to the Angels for Howie Kendrick. Now his second season as a Dodger. Strikes out on a disappearing breaking ball. And despite the two out single from Thompson, Cueto winds up striking out the side and has eight total today. Here comes Lewis Coleman.
Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Get huge cash back on a new Camry or a Corolla at Toyota's Axe the Tax sales event. Kike Hernandez into the game in left field. And a double switch as Lewis Coleman comes into the game to pitch his third appearance of the year. The second one in this series, middle third of the Giants order, Hunter Pence taking ball one. First year with the Dodgers for Coleman. Was signed on the day that pitchers and catchers reported to spring training a few weeks after the Royals released him. Celebrated his 30th birthday this week on opening day while he was participating on his first opening day roster. Got a good head on his shoulders, got a good idea of what he needs to do to be successful. Pence on the ground is second. Chase Utley up with it for the first out. So Kazmir today, four innings, allows the six runs, including three homers. You know, is not nearly as sharp as he was in his Dodger debut on Tuesday. No, I, I, he was up, and he pretty much showed that he could only really command the ball, especially to right-handers, to one side of the plate, and that was more on the away side. I think San Francisco had a lot of very comfortable at-bats against him. And it looked like they recognized where he was trying to get them out. And the fact that the, the changeup was up. It wasn't down where you didn't have too many guys fishing, fishing after that. Good day for Brandon Belt. Singled and homered. Sassin up the warm for the second time today. He was getting loose in that first inning with the Dodgers scored five runs. It was his birthday, by the way, celebrating number 28 today. A lot of birthdays this weekend. At AJ Ellis last night. Culberson and Ethier today. Heston today for the Giants. Happy birthday to AJ, 35th yesterday. Is that baseball season birthdays or off season? September 16th for me. No more. July 23rd. July. Mm -hmm. Yours is in the off season, right, Joe? It is. Yeah, December. That means we get presents from him, and we don't have to worry Sweet. about him in the off season. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys have any particularly memorable birthday games? Wow. Yeah, I did. I had one. Uh, I hit three home runs on uh, my 29th birthday. That's a good day. Not the only one. <laughs> I can't remember if I've pitched on my birthday or not. Belts reached on three times, walks against Coleman. And Duffy. So now three through six in the Giants' order. 11 plate appearances has reached nine times. For Duffy, a single, and he was hit by a pitch. Giants getting two in the first, three in the third, and one in the fourth, and a Pagan homer to tie it at six. Showed Blunt, took a ball. Go from seeing a lefty in Casimir, not to just seeing a righty, but seeing a righty of an awkward angle. And oftentimes when you have guys that drop down or throw sidearm, guys that can usually induce ground balls. 
St. Louis Coleman is looking for that ground ball. Possible double play. Target was down by the knees, or even below the knees from Austin Barnes, where that ball rode up. Two one slider right here looking for a double play ball. The take nothing. That's an outstanding pitch. Hitters count, make it look like a strike right down the middle and just recognize the spin just in time to hold up. Here comes the three one. Duffy hits it in the air to right. Yasiel Pui just still fires back mm -hmm. to first, just shows off that arm. Belt walks back to the back. And the guys in the middle part of the infield really tried to deep Brandon Belt as he was taking off, and the ball was hit. So they were trying to see if they can get Brandon Belt to commit, either continue going to third or stick, sticking around second base. And he saw the ball as Yasiel tries to throw him out at first. Watch Utley and Corey Seeger on this. Brandon Belt hits the ball. He doesn't quite know, and they're all <laughs> pointing and <laughs> acting like the ball's coming. So he picked it up. Brandon Crawford goes after the first one. The foul ground. Chase Utley measures the sidewall, and it's out of play. You ever successfully fool somebody with something like that? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. There are times when you, especially when they go in and they slide, as they're safe, and then I act. I start yelling like, "Play like three, three, three as if he can continue going, and it's a pop up. So they. <laughs> <laughs> to Crawford with an 0 one pitch. J.P. Howell. They're coming into the game, the Dodgers rotation had an ERA of 1.83, and that led the National League. Casimir with a little rough outing. The bullpen ERA was over five, but you got to wait a while before you start evaluating your bullpen. The a few more innings, let them get into their rhythm because we saw Chris Hatcher give it up on Ross Stripling's day, but then come back and pitch well yesterday. Pedro Baez has been pretty much locked and loaded. Kenley Jansen has gotten his first save and executed it. Lewis Coleman has been pitching well, and Yimi Garcia and J.P. Howell have had a couple of rough ones. To be careful here if you're Coleman on a 3 1 to a left handed hitter. He led the team in homers last year and has two this year, including the walk off in the 10th on Friday night. And homers have been a big part of the story for the Giants today and all series long. They've hit three of them all against Kazmir. 3 1. He walked it. Trying to get it inside, make sure he doesn't extend his arms, miss up. And interesting spot here. They had put Gregor Blanco on the on deck circle. 
in Cueto's spot. But instead, they send Cueto to the plate here with two on and two out. Here's the spot where batting your pitcher eight. Uh, backfires a little bit on them. Well, they had the option to hit for him. They decided that Johnny Cueto's ability to go out and pitch still is of higher value than this two out opportunity for offense. 83 pitches for him, and he's really been good since that five run first inning. That last inning, he had three strikeouts. He able to hit that last inning, but. Eight of them total today. It's a career 106 hitter, and he's 0 for 2 at the plate this afternoon. Coleman's 0 1. Hit back up the middle. Barehand Seeger to get him. Corey Seeger. Wasn't expecting the bare hand, but he comes up with the bare hand, feels it smoothly, and a perfect throw to first base. Here's our 76 Dodgers calendar. Off day tomorrow, and then the home opener on Tuesday. Three with the Diamondbacks. Giants coming on Friday. Three more before the team hits the road again. Kenta Maeda makes the start on Tuesday. Dodgers will not see Zach Greinke during that series. Greinke, by the way, in his two starts, in a Diamondbacks uniform is 0-2. He's given up 11 runs on 16 hits over 10 innings. P.K. Hernandez leads off this sixth. In a game tied at six. Came in as part of a double switch last inning, so he bats out of the nine spot. Hutley and Seeger to follow against Cueto. Ground to third, it's Duffy. Well, Chase Utley coming up, and we look at our Carl's Cam, some of the great base running that you were referencing earlier. Called the reads, he has to get off the bat. That one going to right field, running hard, scoring easily on that one, and then also on Seeger's single up the middle. This one's a little bit tougher because you don't know if the center fielder was going to possibly dive and make a great play there. You really have to read it, but you recognize the trajectory and the flight and just gets off and goes running. Okay, 
One for two today. Sit by pitch and scored in the first. Doubled and scored in the fourth. Waits on this 1 0 from Cueto. Quick pitch outside. Two balls, no strikes. Guys, a couple of guys scheduled to come back off of the disabled list. When the team comes home, and now it's Monty Grandal at catcher. Howie Kendrick at second. Howie Kendrick was the guy that everybody just kind of assumed was the starting second baseman. As Utley bangs one up the middle, Crawford position while throws him out. And that Utley would make starts here and there at second. He'd give Turner some time at third. But the way that he started the season, and the important role he's playing as the leadoff guy so far, it's going to be harder for Howie Kendrick to wrestle away playing time than it probably would have looked coming into the season. I really believe it's going to be hard for Howie Kendrick to get in there. I think Dave Roberts will try and toggle them in, but it just to, just to all of a sudden sit Chase Utley, it's going to be hard. That's an eight pitch inning for Johnny Cueto. One, two, three, go the Dodgers despite some solid contact in that frame. through the clouds for the first time in a couple days. Let's check in with Alana Rizzo down in the field. Nice barehanded play there by Corey Seager. Strong infield defense all season long and the same can be said for the outfield. I spoke to George Lombard the first base coach who's also in charge of positioning the outfielders and asked him what he wants his outfielders to be doing. Of course they've had some nice defensive plays in the outfield this series as well. He said a few things. I want them to know their responsibility as far as the outfield is concerned. He said I want them to look around at their respective outfielders first. Then I want them to look at their infielders and then I want them to look at me I want to make sure that they have the appropriate position before every single pitch he said they need to be engaged guys yeah, there's some incredible plays and Ross Gripling's outing on Friday night as Angel Pagan takes the first one for a ball you know when you get a no hitter there's always always that one signature defensive play that you look back on had Stripling finish that thing off it would have been hard to pick just one that was the signature there was ball early in the left center gap that Scott Van Slyke ran a long way for, made a basket catch, battling the wind, and then I think the next one was in right field by Yasiel Puig. Then there was a swinging bunt that Stripling fielded and threw down there to Adrian Gonzalez, and he picked it for him. And then Jock Peterson made that diving stab out in center. Pagan's fourth inning home run to tie the game at six. He waits on a two one from Lewis Coleman. Generous outside edge evens it up. Angel Pagan has been the leadoff hitter and center fielder for the Giants for the last several seasons. Sliding to the bottom of the order and over to left with the dark span sign from the Nationals this year. He pulls a high line drive towards the right field corner. That's a base hit. Puig plays it perfectly. Fires into second, but late. 
Leadoff double, Angel Pagan. Well, he backdoors a breaking ball on Pagan on the pitch before. He wanted to go back outside with it, but it comes back over the middle of the plate. We've seen a lot of these giant hitters capitalize on mistakes thrown by the Dodger pitchers today. That was a mistake, and he finds himself with a leadoff double. And that will do it for Lewis Coleman. Dave Roberts comes and grabs it from him. And in a 6-6 game, in the bottom of the six, Giants have to go ahead running scoring position. Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. Back to back lefties at the top of the Giants order. So Dave Roberts calls on his left hander J.P. Howell. Are we going to be bunting here. Watch the footing as you come in to charge the bunt. Denard Span. Is the batter for the Giants. Dodgers led this game 5 0 after a half inning. Giants got two in the bottom of the first, three in the third. Both teams with a single run in the fourth. Howell to spam with the first one, and he swings away and grounds it foul. JP not a fiery left hander so he's not bringing it up there 94 95 so Bruce Bochy knowing that he's more an off speed pitcher having confidence that span can hit the ball to the right side trying to bounce back from an outing to begin this series for JP gave up four runs on four hits without recording an out and anywhere there was some soft contact but bottom line result something JP would like to forget about. Down with the leadoff double. Top of the order now with Denard Span. Turn around the grass at third for this 0-1. Say that you know, the Giants have been really hard to put away, but after the five spot in the first by the Dodgers, the game got tight within the before the third. You know, all of a sudden it's five-five. So it's really just been a battle back and forth. Yeah, 
it has been a battle. When you look at what Johnny Cueto has been able to do in this game, it's quite impressive where he does give up a five spot. Dodgers bat around him that inning. And here he is. He's still pitching in and pitched into the sixth inning so far. And they see him out there in the seventh. Howells 1-1 one, one to span. Inside, two balls and a strike. Span one for 17 in this series. Go panic do next. And it's Posey. And a tie game in the sixth in this series finale. Dodgers trying to salvage a series split. To begin the season with a five and two road trip. Howell pumps it 2 1. Nice breaking ball, 2 and 2. One of JP's signatures is he can get back into counts when he's in hitter's counts and go with his change up or his curveball. You can expect the unexpected with him. Swing stays at two and two. And you know that he, you don't want him to pull the ball. You're a hitter, that's in your mind. You're anticipating the ball to continue to be on the outer half as a lefty, and then he comes up and in on you. Another 2 2 pitch and another glance at second. And Angel Pagan, who doubled off Lewis Coleman to start this inning. It was Pagan's homer that tied it back in the fourth. Giants looking for their first lead. JP Howell trying to slam the door, keep it tied into the late innings. Roberto Kelly, nice hops in that third base coach's box. What are we also talking about this Giants lineup? After the Dodgers put up five, by how they grind out at bats and work in the bat. So it's a perfect example. Fallon balls off, something that Bruce Bochy appreciates from his lineup. These guys go out there, they don't give up, and they keep battling. Seventh pitch of this at bat that it arch span. The breaking ball two and one, which is a really nice pitch. And then they've kind of pitched backwards since there. They're staying with the hard stuff the last three pitches. JP trying to get the ball away from span with a fastball, but it keeps creeping over the middle of the plate or back to the inside. He's able to follow him off. Another 2 2 from JP Howell. Softly hit over Howell. Tough play. Chase Utley can't pull the trigger. And they're at the corners. Well, this was a really good at bat by Bernard Spam. Fouling off some tough pitches. Seeing a lot of pitches here. And even if. Chase makes this play as he tries to get him barehanded, knowing the speed of Denard Span. Denard Span do does his job, battling and getting it to the right side to move the runner over at the very least. And they always say when you make the effort, good things happen, and he finds himself with a base hit. This is where the Dodger de defense and J.P. Howell right now have to almost sacrifice the run at third. You've got three at bats left. You don't want to risk some huge crooked number here and go into the last three at bats down two, down three, down four. I think you really trade outs for runs right here. Let's see what they do positionally. 
they're, they're playing the line really playing. aggressive. Yeah. Middle infielders kind of halfway. They moved back some. They initially lined up right on the edge of the grass. I like this alignment better. Joe Panic over three today. Panic, not necessarily a guy that you're going to get a double play ball automatically on a ground ball of the infield. So in at the corners, he, Justin Turner gets one, Adrian Gonzalez gets one. They're going to be able to check back the guy at third, which he should be running home. And the ball up the middle to chase and Corey, if it's just absolutely blistered, they might take the risky play and come home, but they'll probably take the two outs, I would think, and give them a run. Owls 1 0. And it dribbles in foul. One ball, one strike. And on the defensive side, especially when you're in the middle infield. And you're th all these things are going through your head as far as positioning. That's why it's important for when your coaches or your man when you're looking in and they tell you what depth, whether it's you know double play depth. Sometimes there's this depth where they kind of have the three depth where it's in between, and that's one I just never like because you're then with the ball you're indecisive. Well, am I supposed to go home at this depth or am I supposed to just turn the double play? Panic lifts it in the air to deep center field. Way back there and over the head of Jack Peterson. Pagan scores. Spin to the plate. Relay throw not there. A two-run double from Joe Panic. And the Giants have come all the way back to take an 8-6 lead. And Panic crushes this ball to left center. And the relay is pretty good. Jock Peterson gets it in to Corey. Corey has trouble getting it out of his glove. He's got such a bullet of a gun, though. He almost makes up the difference with his arm strength and throwing it accurately to Austin Barnes. You see, Jock gets it to him, but then there's a little hesitation right here, kind of a double clutch, and then this great, great throw and almost got him. That, that was by an inch or so because an inch or so more as far as the trajectory he's able to catch that and then tag him. Been a tough series for J.P. Howell. Gives up the infield single. And then Joe Panic with a two-run double to make it 8-6. And Yimi Garcia comes in. With Panic in second. Still nobody out. Buster Posey at the plate. 
Posey in his career against Garcia, four for six with a home run. He's two for three today with a home run. Three for three today, seven for 12 in the series for Posey. Pair of home runs. Garcia's 1 0. Left over the plate, got away with it right at Chase Utley. 1 out. Still impressive there. They got a lead. They take the lead 8 6. You still have a man on second base and no outs. And you got your third hitter, Buster Posey. And, and I'm not saying he was just giving himself up. But he was thinking to go to right side. He was thinking about going to right side, moving the runner over. And he accomplished that. Middle of the Giants order today has been so good. Hunter Pence, part of that equation, one for two with a walk and a pair of runs scored. Every position player has reached at least once in San Francisco's order. Although the same thing can be said for the Dodgers today. Six runs on nine hits for L.A., eight runs on ten hits for the Giants. Well, this entire s series, I think, the Run production has been just the difference has been those home runs that the Giants have been able to hit this entire series because coming into this game, the Dodgers have out hit the Giants. They had 32 hits with the Giants has 24 in the series. But they have been able to score 17 runs off those 24 hits. And just look at this game as well. I mean, the Giants just have one more hit. And They've already just had three just this inning, so the Dodgers were leaving the hits as well, but the long balls have really hurt the Dodgers this series. Garcia to Pence with a 1-2. Opposite field drive over Puig's head, reaches up and makes the play, but it'll bring home panic from third. Fastball, he gets on top of it, does the job. Just didn't want to swing and miss. Yasiel makes a really good play, making sure that Pence doesn't reach base, just record the out. The tail end of that with the throw in, a little bit more out of frustration. I hope that was out of frustration because, <laughs> I mean, we know Yasiel thinks he can yeah. throw anybody out from anywhere on the field. Three run inning for the Giants. They've scored nine of the last ten runs. And Brandon Belt takes strike one from Garcia. This one has the same feeling as game one of this series, where the Dodgers led 4 0 and lost 12 6. They led this one 5 0 and now trail 9 6. I'll tell you what, there's still plenty of game left. If you're the Dodgers, I mean, this is, you know, when you, you always look at, okay, when you're down, and the other team takes the lead, and you get one run per inning, possibly tie this game up. That's what you have to think, where it's not a matter of like, okay, we're down by three, and then we're, we have to go in there and score four to five runs just to tie it, or with three runs in just one inning. And you have, you're going to have three chances again, so it can just be one an inning, but you got to make sure you can stop the Giants right here. Remember yesterday, the Giants used six relievers, so it's not exactly a fresh bullpen down there. Johnny Cueto has thrown 91 pitches and has struck out eight. So we're going to the late innings of this game. 
Bell hits a towering fly ball to center. Peterson was playing deep, so comes on and makes the catch to end the inning. Doubles from Panic and Pagan with a single from Span, and the Giants score three times to take a 9 6 lead. Time for our SoCal Honda in-game box score that looks like a National League box score. You see the pitcher's spot, the seven spot because of a double switch earlier. Dodgers got five runs in the first inning, led 5 nothing. They got one more in the fourth, but the Giants have scored nine of the last ten. Lead 9-6 as Johnny Cueto goes back out there for the seven. Still time to get some work done, though, if you're the Dodgers. Well, you got three, four, and five coming up, so... No better part than the middle of your order to start a rally. Justin Turner, with an RBI single to begin the scoring in that five run first inning, which was the first five run first for the Dodgers in this ballpark in 15 years. Strike one to Turner. Bounce softly to third, but wide of the bag, and it's 0 2. Gonzalez and Puig to follow in this inning. So the Dodgers try to come from behind for the second day in a row. Forced extras with a run in the ninth yesterday, won it in the tenth. Turner got it off of the handle to center span. Or to think that the Giants had action in the bullpen in the first inning to see where Johnny Cueto is now. They almost started over a new game. The guy who gave up five and then the guy who shut him down for one the rest of the way so far. Adrian Gonzalez shooting one the other way base hit they shifted him to pull it and he punched it the other way like a true pro despite the leadoff batter getting out making out Justin Turner Adrian Gonzalez job is just to get on base and that's exactly what he does staying inside it beating the shift Just one man over there Hey, the more and more Adrian just starts spraying the ball all over it, you might start seeing teams deciding, well, maybe we don't shift quite as much on Adrian Gonzalez. Here's Puig. 
He struck out twice against Cueto today. Had one to hit there and popped it up. It's panic. So two gone in the seventh. You can enjoy MLB.TV Premium for a new low price this year. And watch every out-of-market game of all 30 teams live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. Visit MLB.TV for details. Johnny Cueto with eight strikeouts today. He's walked one. He's allowed six runs on ten hits. But has settled in after that bumpy first inning. John Peterson's hit came in the first. Two strikeouts since then. Corey Guerin. Two and on Peterson. This account where you're looking for one to drive out of the park in this situation. Yes. 2-0. Man on first. It's either when you don't want to get out of your swing, especially at a big ballpark. It's either drive it out of the park, not necessarily pull, but if I get a ball, I can drive it out of the park to center field and possibly get that gap. He had a two-run homer with the Dodgers down three in game one. He moves ahead three and oh. And with Jock Peterson's power, I'm giving him the green light. Oh, for if sure. he gets one, go ahead, let it fly. See if he can bring the Dodgers back to within one. To the fastball on the outer half, strike one. That's something I think Jock Peterson has to understand himself, too. Sometimes you get in those spots, it's okay to let it go. Did let it go there, three and two. And that's an example because he now gives, he would have given himself at least two chances of possibly, even if he fouls off that one, three, oh. But just be ready, because you can tell he was just, he was taking all the way through it. But just be ready, whether you swing or not, it's not a problem. But now, now you're thinking, okay, not striking out, it's not about it. Let's just get a ball you can drive. Fredo's gotten him a couple of times with sharp breakers. And we're in the dirt. Here's the three two just misses and the Dodgers bring the tie run to the plate in the seventh. Ball tries to leak back towards the plate doesn't make it all the way back. Jock with a good read. Cueto with a little disappointment. On to the second walk of the day for Cueto. Charlie Culberson was in the on deck circle. He's pulled back and Micah Johnson takes a walk up there. And that representing the tying run here in the seventh. It was activated yesterday with Carl Crawford going down on the disabled list. Started the season in Triple A. Showed up to the park when the game was in the seventh inning. His flight was delayed. He connected from Nashville to Las Vegas. And he got to Vegas and the flight was delayed by two hours. So instead of getting on the ground in San Francisco right around game time, he landed at about 2.45 and got to the ballpark in the seventh. Pinch hit in the late innings. Played a couple of innings of defense too. It's like a worst nightmare, right? Trying to get to the big leagues and your flight's delayed. Johnson hits a line drive to left, but the gun is there. And the inning is over. Dodgers get a couple of base runners, but don't score. Johnny Cueto turns things around after that five-run first.
Nine six Giants Joe Blanton comes into the game trying to keep it right here and give the Dodgers a chance in the late innings. Blanton will face Duffy Crawford and Cueto's spot in this inning but don't assume Johnny Cueto will hit for himself. Moved over 100 pitches. At the top of this frame. Blanton comes in here. Replacing Yimi Garcia. Who combined with J.P. Howell last inning. And they'll get Matt Duffy who's one for two today. Joe looking to redeem himself from the other night. Lives in Tennessee. And signed as a free agent in January. For a second stint with the Dodgers. So the Dodgers about a month and a half in 2012 when the Phillies traded him over. And the following year had the worst season of his career with the Angels. He was released after the season. The next year was in AAA with the A's for two starts, but then decided to retire. Duffy crushes one in the air to center. Peterson racing back over his head. Duffy starts the seventh with a double. Good swing by Duffy. A ball that just leaks back over the inner half. Going fastball away, and it ends up kind of middle in. Duffy makes it pay for the mistake. Up comes Brandon Crawford. Rips it to second. Utley feeds Seeger for the double play. More splendid Dodger defense in this series. Nice defense and very fortunate, especially after Matt Duffy hitting that leadoff double. Last inning, the Giants had a leadoff double, managed to score three in that inning, so the Dodgers were looking for something. Crawford doing his job, going to the right side, just happened to hit it too hard right at Chase Utley. Utley. Feeding it to Corey Seager for the double play. It's Aira Adrianza that'll pinch hit for Johnny Cueto. Palmer against Clayton Kershaw yesterday. Kind of the second of his career. His two home runs have come off of Clayton Kershaw and Andy Pettit. That one fades back in for a strike. Another new one. Flips one to left. Hernandez position shallow and comes on to make the play. Bring it into an inning that started with a Duffy double, but the double play allows Blanton to face the minimum.
trail the Giants by three as we go to the eighth inning. This week only, T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. Go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB to sign up now. Saw Sergio Romo on the mound, replacing Johnny Cueto, his third appearance of this series already. Gave up a home run to Jock Peterson in the first game and then pitched a scoreless inning last night. Austin Barnes leads off the eighth for the Dodgers. Ball one. We talked about how the return of Howie Kendrick off of the DL might affect things. Barnes hits a fly ball on the left field line, but got a long run and get there. It'll be interesting to see how Kendrick's return on, combined with Yasmani Grandal's return. Affect Austin Barnes status and again Dave Roberts has said he's not opposed to carrying three catchers and the thing that Barnes has going for him Omar is that he's not just a catcher. And I think that's why he can say I'm not opposed to carrying three catchers and the other benefit not only that he can play multiple multiple positions second base possibly outfield but you also don't know if Yasmani is going to be a hundred percent to be able to catch regularly. Take two and two. No matter what happens in this game, I think this has been an example and a sampling of what kind of battle it's going to be all year between the Dodgers and the Giants. And it looks like even maybe the Diamondbacks are going to throw their hat in the ring of the battle of the West. But these games have all been really close, go either way. Trying to win a fourth consecutive West Division title. It'll be a very entertaining year with these clubs fighting it out. Austin Barnes laid it off this eighth inning. With the fly ball to center for the Dodge Spin. No team has ever won four consecutive West Division titles since the 1969 expansion when West Division format reached uh, the post-expansion format. Of course, different iterations of it since. No team's ever won four in a row. P.K. Hernandez. Got to get on base, try to build an inning. Be nice to get one or two here instead of having to deal with getting three against Casilla. That's what I was talking about, how last inning was so, so important to try to just get one on them. Because it really changes these last couple innings, that eighth inning, that ninth inning, when you're down just maybe a couple of runs. Three, three just definitely changes things. Yeah, it's not like it's a one run difference between two and three. I can tell you while you're standing on the mound pitching, you know, with a two run lead, you're thinking anybody reaches base, I gotta face that tying run. With three runs, you just feel like there's a lot more breathing room. Pitch selection, what could possibly happen throughout the inning. Your defenders can take a little bit more risk to grab you an out. Romero Hernandez with a 2 1 pitch. That's a strike. Four and three road trip is not bad, but five and two would have felt a lot better if they could come back in this one. 
You beat the teams you're supposed to beat, which they did with San Diego. If you can go 500 with the teams that you're supposed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with on the road, that's when you start to feel like you're building a championship season. And we have brushed the surface of this season, but you still start to evaluate. Hernandez has worked the count full. Waits on the payoff from Romo. Posey sets inside. Romo delivers and misses. And Hernandez gives them a base runner with one away here in the eighth. And last inning kind of ended with a bang. Micah Johnson ripped that ball to left field. They hadn't played right. That wasn't some just routine fly ball to left. Bruce Bochy coming out. With a couple of left-handed hitters due up for the Dodgers and Utley and Seeger, he will go to a left-handed pitcher. Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. And by Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We treat kids better. Josh Osich, left-handed pitcher, on to face a couple of left-handed batters and Utley and Seeger due for the Dodgers here in a three-run game in the eighth. Utley with a double back in the fourth. Was hit by a pitch to start the game. Scored after both. And has given the Dodgers a base runner with a walk. And Utley taking ball one. Bruce Bochy goes with the left on left situation for the next two hitters. But both these Dodger hitters are not intimidated by left handed pitchers. You could see them in the starting lineups against lefties. That's the quality of bats that they can throw up there against the southpaws. misses and Utley's ahead 2 and all. I'd be very surprised if Chase swings at this pitch. He's not afraid to hit with two strikes. He knows what his job is is to try and get the tying run to the plate. It's going to have to be right in his zone. He's going to let it go. It was <laughs> up and out over the plate. It's the one thing the advantage of a left on left situation does is that when you a lefty on lefty and the left handed batter gets in the hitting count they might attack a little bit more knowing that they don't have to fight off the breaking ball later where with a right hander on the mound chase could allow himself to build the count a little more. Two fastballs to hit right there. It goes back to what I was saying earlier with like Jock Peterson, who was 3 0. In your mind, you're thinking 
you know, it's not that I have three strikes. It's I have three chances. Mm -hmm. And you adjust your swing based on, you know, the account. Like, okay, can I really let it fly? Almost really try to maybe possibly hit one out. And how many chances do I give myself to do that? And when do I change? Down goes full on Chase Utley. Wally could reach against Osich. Corey Seager would represent the tying run here in the eighth inning. Play behind Hernandez on a 3 2. Nutley just got a piece. Oh, that gets a piece of Posey. Looked like, looked like he kind of turned his leg and it missed the shin guard when it fouled. It might have just got his leg without the shin guard. Look at that right foot. Oh, it's the right foot that gets him underneath the shin guard. Right near the ball of that right foot. For those of you at home that want to know what that feels like, go out to the garage, grab a hammer. <laughs> Kids tuning in to get baseball advice from Oral and Elmar, and <laughs> Oral tells him to go grab a hammer and hit himself in the toe. <laughs> See what Utley does on this 3 2. High fly ball, but easily playable for Hunter Pence. Two go. That's a swing out and momentum right there. You get a 3 2 count, you get the chance to get one pitch away from getting the tying run, and Osage throws a strike, and that can change a game. Corey Seager, a couple of hits today. He's a hit in 10 straight games now, dating back to late last season. And hits one off of the plate right back to Osich, who gets the job done. Top of the bottom of the eighth inning in San Francisco. Guys in the studio getting set for Access Sportsnet Dodgers, which comes up right when we finish. Alana Rizzo will be inside the clubhouse for reactions. You guys will break the game down for you. All brought to you by Nissan. We finish here in San Francisco with this series finale between the Dodgers and Giants. 
Joel Blanton back out there, and Angel Pagan taking ball one. Better not see that tie on Mr. Gwynn again. Dodger Giant King might have to sacrifice that tie the rest of the year. Yeah. I think Jerry can handle that. Pagan flips one to left, Hernandez. So the Dodgers will have three, four, and five coming up in the ninth inning against Santiago Casilla. And no matter what happens, a four and three trip. It's not a bad way to start the season if they weren't able to come from behind. Sweeping San Diego, coming here to San Francisco in a four-game series. Bernard Span takes ball one. The, the thing that makes it a little bit harder to stomach if you can't come from behind is like you mentioned earlier. Dodgers had every right to win each game in this series. That makes it tough, and the fact that it's the Giants. Yeah, right. Led 4 0 in the first game, lost 12 6. They led 2 0 in the second game, lost 3 2 in extras. That was a game where Ross Stripling had a no hitter going into the eighth inning. One yesterday, 3 2. Today, led 5 0 after a half inning. There's Ross. 2 1. That's right. Well, I'll tell you, there, there are definitely some positives from the series. I mean, one, I mean, if you think about last year, the Dodgers only averaged two, uh, fewer than two runs here at AT&T Ballpark. They're not doing that this year. They're putting some runs on the board. And two, they're also getting a lot of people on base. They're managing to get on base, giving themselves chances. You know, obviously, yesterday's game, you know, runners in scoring position, two for 21, but that had that was just yesterday's game. They've been up until yesterday doing a, doing a lot better with runners in scoring position and in quality at bats. They're having quality at bats more consistently, so there are a lot of positives just from the offensive side going to the home opener. You come out of spring training, you have all-time record of 10 guys on the DL. Not sure who you're even going to run out there. You run into some more injuries, nagging some. Some go to the DL. Crawford goes to the DL. Vance Light can't really play today. Kind of set down and back. And you're not sure who who's going to be your fifth starter. And all of a sudden, Ross Stripling throws you seven and a third of no hit ball. Denard Span has had some nice at bats today. Cashes into the base hit here. I think of everything we've seen in this season opening road trip. A 15 run outburst on opening night. Game three of the year, Kenta Maeda's debut. He homers. You come here and get off the great start and see the Giants ride the long ball, a grand slam to a win. Game two, an extra innings loss. But that included a rookie pitcher in his debut, taking a no hitter into the eighth inning. An extra innings win yesterday in a matchup between Kershaw and Bumgarner. And today, all kinds of runs, all kinds of hits, just more of them for the Giants where we stand right now in the eighth. Had that scoreless streak to start the year, one short of the major league record for consecutive scoreless innings pitched to begin a season. Finished at 31, the major league record 32. For the St. Louis Cardinals in 1963. So we've had history, we've had some breakout performances. A lot of drama in this Dodgers Giant series. First four of 19 this year between these teams. Good feet over there, and Adrian Gonzalez kind of flashed into the bench. Let's take a little time here. You might want to look at this one. Close. Wondering if he didn't feel the ground when he swiped the tag and he wasn't looking at that point when the glove hit the ground. I think 
Adrian Gonzalez is smart. I think he just recognizes that, listen, it's definitely worth a look. At least take your time. Fly ball off of the bat at Joe Panic, called by Peterson, caught by Peterson. Buster Posey, two for four today, seven for 13 in this series. right there you face a high quality hitter like Buster Posey and you make a pitcher's pitch right on the edge you you want it a little bit more than if it was a guy without a resume yeah. and respect from Alan Porter behind the plate right there Joe Blanton kind of surveys the pitch and then asks is that a way by pointing his finger and Porter just said calmly yes. There's a way pitchers can ask the umpire where the pitches were in a respectful manner. Same thing with hitters when you're talking we're right there talking to the umpire. Posey lines one on a bounce to short. Seeger's got it. And goes to second for the four out. See if the Dodgers can make some magic in the ninth inning. Turner, Gonzalez, and Puig, the heart of the order, coming up against Santiago Garcia. Santiago Casilla is into the game with a three run lead. Here on the ninth inning, trying to make it three of four for the Giants against the Dodgers. Big man doesn't give up a lot. This is going to be a, a big hill to climb for the Dodgers. They gave him a run for the money, his money the other night. The right guys coming to the plate to give it a shot, though. Three, four, and five in the Dodger order. Casilla was the winning pitcher in extra innings two nights ago. But a blown save yesterday when he gave up one run on a hit, a walk, and a hit batsman. He hit Turner in the ninth inning yesterday, and then Turner came around to score the tying run. Strike one. Turner won 
one for four today. Four for 13 in this series. But behind nothing in two. Gonzalez and Puig to follow in this ninth inning. Giants have scored nine of the last ten runs in this game. Two in the first, three in the third, one in the fourth, and then that three spot in the seventh. Upstairs, ball one. Three spot came in the sixth. So for San Francisco. Turner hits it to Belt for the first out. Dodgers will get on a charter after the game, get home, have an off day tomorrow, and then be excited to see the fans for opening day. No matter what you do in this game or what your record is, the home opener is an awful lot of fun for players. It's good they have a day off tomorrow. I mean, when you have a series like this against your rival, it, it can weigh on you. It can fatigue you. And so, especially a four-game series, especially a four-game series that have been close every single game, so it's good that you they can get that rest refresh for that opening day. It's been a, a tense four games. A lot of momentum shifts. Even the first game, what was 12-6, that final score not indicative of how tight and how many swings and momentum there were. And the same thing in this one. If this score were to hold, there's much more to it than just a three-run advantage for the Giants. One and two on Gonzalez. An emotional roller coaster with Ross Striplings. Seven and a third no-hit ball. I mean, you're on pins and needles from about the fourth inning on, fifth inning on, just watching him, watching the pitch count. Seeing him not give up hits, seeing the great defense. The game's still being tight. Strike three call, two out. Adrian Gonzalez recognized, you know, this is the last inning. He's just trying to get on. He's battling, and you get upset. You're thinking, listen, that is just too far outside. It was actually very close. Might have caught the corner, but this is what you're feeling as a hitter. You're going, I'm battling up here. I'm trying to get on any way. This is our last chance. You can't give him that pitch. Big trying to keep the Dodgers' hopes alive. He came up with two outs, and the team still down by a run yesterday and singled to keep it alive before they scored a run against Garcia. So, Send that game in to extras, but a lot of work to do, and only one bullet left. Won't take long before they get a chance to see the Giants again, the back half of that opening homestand. So the Giants come to Dodger Stadium for the first time this year, and in the first Two weeks of the season, these teams will have played seven of their 19 games on the year. Pui gets a fly ball to left for Pagan. The Giants take three of four from the Dodgers. 
still though a winning road trip to start the season for LA they sweep San Diego before coming here to San Francisco getting the extra innings win yesterday but losing three games in which they had leads that included a 4 nothing lead in the opener and a 5 nothing lead today and a 2 nothing lead late on Friday night. Alexis play of the game Joe Panic's tie breaking double gave the Giants their first lead of the day in the sixth inning. Had 